This Did everybody uh, have a recorded. chance to read through that? Yes. Yes. Bobby, you, uh, you wrote it, so I assume you're okay. And Peter, you saw it too? Yeah, I, I move we accept them as presented. Okay. Uh, do we have a second? Second. Okay. Uh, all those in favor of accepting the minutes as written? Aye. 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 Okay. Uh, item three is addition to the agenda. Is Joe with us yet? Joe Thoreau? Joe, Joe is with us. Okay, Joe. Um, are there any additions to the agenda? No, none. Good. Item four is uh, old business. Uh, Tracy Smith, uh, 33 Amadon Drive, yard improvements in Upland Review area. So uh, where we left off with that one, I believe, is that um, we uh, received an application at our last meeting and we did accept it. And um, just uh, based on the plans that were given to us, um, I think that it was pretty unanimous that that uh, the plans were lacking in some detail and difficult for us to understand what what was actually uh, being proposed. I mean, is there anybody here representing uh, uh, 33 Amazon Drive? Yes, uh, George Babiard. Okay. Hi, George. Okay. Um, so can you uh, just kind of go over, uh, you know, what, what you're planning on doing out there? Right now, we just, we want to get things that we can get approved. And and right now, we're talking three stumps to be removed that are in the yard. Uh, there are fence we have on the property line. Because it's within 100 feet of the water, we gave a layout of the fence we wanted to do. Hey, George, I, I can't hear you at all. Can anybody else hear him? Okay. No. Oh, is that better? How about now? Yeah, yeah try again. Okay. The uh, background noise. There's three, noise stumps, okay. there's three stumps on the property that I want to remove. Three, three stumps, yeah. Item. The other one is uh, there's a set of steps that I want to make a continuous step. Uh, there's a sh it's a short step now. I'm making it longer. I uh, have plans submitted to that. The third is the fence we have along the property line, just to make sure that it's all set as far as what I did with the layout of the fence, because it goes up to five feet from the water, uh, from the wall, which is the property line. Yeah. So so it, it it's uh really scaled back from where we were before, I guess, right? Well, the problem is uh, for me to go through that whole plan, it's going to take five years of uh, engineering and, and A2 surveys and all this and that. So I kind of want to get things done and then I'll submit the plans at the top. I didn't know I would have to go through this whole, whole yeah. Um, project. Uh, you know, well, I'm, a, I'm a homeowner. Not, it's not a commercial so, property. So. Yeah. So, are you are you going to uh, are you going to be able to uh, give us a little better plan than what you have now? I think I I, well, I showed the plan with the uh, every stump and the locations of every stump of where they are, and I have the uh, plans I submitted with the steps and the uh, the distances, the sizes. And the fence, I have a layout of exactly on the property line where they are. So uh, I, I wonder what you want more. So, so Joe, is, is he referring to what we looked at last time, or is there something new? Uh, no, he's he's referring to the plan that you guys uh, have that I that I sent you. Um, I think uh, I, I think the the main issue that I have, I mean, jo George did a very good job of of measuring out. Uh, and orienting, like I'm looking at the steps right now, which uh, I highlighted for you guys uh, in the PDF I sent you. Um, he's, you know, he's got he's got measurements that are. Uh, I'm assuming most of them are in inches, um, but the one thing that isn't shown is like the distance that is those steps are from from the water line or from the high water mark. Um, 
that's that's one of the issues that I have. Um, the other thing that I had, um, George, that you you also included was uh, some lawn grading, um, and okay. in the plan there, you know, that shows that shows that you wanted to grade that. So that's that's actually part of your part of your application as well. Um, okay. I don't have any issues with the lawn grading. I don't think it's going to be a an impact to the lake in any way, shape, or form. But that is uh, that's also that's uh, that's one of the one of the items that you have uh, you have included. If you take a look at the if you go through the application on actually on the um, Wyndham Waterworks uh, reporting page, um, you guys itemized. Uh, a, a, B, C, D, and E as different components of your um, application, which I thought was a great idea. Unfortunately, they're they're kind of hidden on on the Wyndham Waterworks thing, which I don't know if the commission quite saw that or not. So, okay. Um, and and I'm just going to go over them real quick just to try to get everybody on the same page. Okay. So, yep. uh, item item A, uh, they have as the removal of the three stumps. And uh, George uh, drew a separate sheet that shows very accurately uh, where those stumps are in relation to uh, the house and the property. Um, you know, provided provided some silt fencing gets put up just in case uh, he's digging those stumps out and we get a crazy rainstorm or something. I really don't see any uh, any issues with the removals of the stumps. Um, Item number B, it says new new steps according to plan. Um, I am assuming that the new steps you're talking about are the steps that run uh, parallel. I'm going to assume parallel to the pond, and they kind of bend at a 45 degree, and that's a separate plan that you have drawn. Um, run. Yep. Okay. Uh, item C says wall with three steps. Now I don't know if that's the same same item. Uh, I don't see any wall on on your plan. I don't see any anything labeled as wall. Um, so I'm I'm kind of confused as to where where that actually is. Is that adjacent that, to your sunroom or? Uh, that refers to the same thing actually. Okay, so item uh, B and C are pretty much the same thing. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, so item D is a, f a fence section that's adjacent to the lake, and we all spoke about that. Um, when when George originally did uh, his his application that I did an agent approval on, it was for the fence that he built. Um, and then after the fact, he ended up uh, building an extra section uh, that goes up to the or close to the edge of the lake there. So he uh, he diagrammed that on the plan. That's 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 pretty obvious. He's got a note there. And then the last one was grading of lawn between the house and fence and the walkway. And that's, that's um, if you look on the plan, he's got a little asterisk and it shows grade lawn. So I'm assuming that's the, uh, that's the general area. And again, I don't, I don't see any issue with that. Um, so I guess my, honestly, my, my, my biggest concern is probably a little clearer plan that shows the, uh, the steps and all these other things in relation to where the uh, where the lake is, and um, I guess that's all I have. Okay. The, right. The the okay. the steps are in relationship to the step and wall that's there right now. So it's right there. So uh, distance. Uh, it just doesn't show you the distance to the water. Maybe that's what you're saying. Which yeah, and, no and the other thing, George, what I would, what I, what else I would put on there, George, when you redraw it, is yeah. just uh, show a line of silt fence between okay. between the the pond, uh, the lake, and and uh, and your activity there. Um, that would okay. that would be a good thing to add. Yep. Okay. Okay, Joe. Uh, thank you. That that was a good uh, summary. Uh, Bob, do you have anything, any questions? Do you want to add anything to the discussion right now? I can't, you're muted, Bob. Okay, all right. Uh, no, I don't have any further discussion. Okay. Uh, Peter, you, you have anything uh, you want to? It sounds like we should table this for one more month. Yep. Agreed. 
Uh, Cheryl? Right, I, I, I agree we should wait for a plan that shows um, more detail regarding the distance of, of these activities from the water. Yep, and uh, Ken? Uh, nothing to add. Okay, all right, so uh, George, um, it, it sounds like we're just looking for a little, uh, a little more uh, information and maybe a little bit uh, better plan. Um, but uh, from what we've uh, heard so far, doesn't sound, uh, you know, too too impactful. So it, would it be all right if you uh, come back uh, as soon as you can with some more information and a little uh, more detailed plan for next month? Yeah, I mean. The well, sure, but the, the only information you're really seeking is the distance of the steps to the water. If I, I, I can't uh, submit that, you want that submitted before the approval. Is that what you want? Uh, that, that he, he, was, he was looking for a little bit more detail on the uh, the wall and the steps in relation to the, uh, to the lake, and he wanted to add a silt fence on the plan, so we need to see where, okay. where that is going to go. And... Um, uh so you know if yeah if so we're, we'll uh so if yeah if yeah I, I think we'll leave it at that and uh yeah, George, if you have uh, further questions you can give joe a call and uh see if you can get back to us before uh next month okay good enough all right okay thank you let's uh move on to uh item b which is the uh, 96 knot highway the uh, notice of violation so so right now we have a an, an application in front of us and that we've accepted and we have a uh, a cease and desist order and um, we've been uh, looking at this situation for quite a long time now so I really like to try to bring it to a head today if at all possible um, so, uh, Cheryl, I, I know you have uh, given this an awful lot of thought, um, and you're familiar with the uh, wetlands uh, agent, uh, uh, wetland uh, soil scientist that, that did the report. Can you um, maybe just give us a, a quick summary of how, you know, where you are with this and, and you know. Right. So, um, thank you. Um, what I what I'd like to do is just try to uh, summarize the concerns that I have had with the application, and then potentially um, just suggest a way forward. Um, so the first issue was that it is clear that conditions of the permit that was issued a long time ago, for 14 years, I guess, uh, were not met, um, and I, I do believe that we need to rectify that. Um, and then secondly, there. Um, there was that discrepancy in the wetland flagging. And I see that George Logan is here at this meeting. Um, he is the current um, uh, soil scientist working on the property. Uh, but there were there were two other um, uh, plans that have been drawn over, the, over many decades that show different lines. And basically, um, you know, depending on, on, on where we are with those, um, either the millings and the fill were placed in the wetland or they were placed in the upland review area. Um, either way, they, they were placed without a permit. Um, but to me, even if you consider that they might have been placed uh, further than uh, the wetland limit that was mapped a long time ago, it, it is compared to the overall um, amount of wetlands in, the, in this area, um, I feel that it's a, it's a fairly minor encroachment. Um, we, I think we have the ability to issue an after-the-fact permit. Um, so I, my suggestion would be this, that we we do issue a permit to retain the existing fill uh, with conditions. And I'd like to summarize my suggested conditions. Um, and I do actually have proposed wording because I think, I feel like the, these conditions should be a little more specific than uh, the ones we issued a long time ago um, with regard to particularly a time frame for completion. Um, so basically, what I would what I would prefer to see is that the wood fencing proposed um, be extended uh, to basically all the way to the property line instead of the proposed waste blocks that are listed 
I, I'd like to see that wood fencing the whole way. Um, I think that um, the, the waste blocks don't really provide enough of a delineation and a in you know impediment to further uh, uh, to prevent further in, you know incursion into the wetland. Um, and uh, there is a good detail sheet which is uh, shows a three three foot high fence. Um, and I'd like I would prefer to see that the posts in, in concrete instead of well they don't really say what their the posts will be set in but I'd like to see it be a permanent fence. Um, we should have signage. The signage was actually requir required in the previous permit, um, and it should be placed in the vicinity of the fencing, and that would hopefully uh, discourage dumping beyond the fence line. And the plantings that were required in the original permit uh, should be, you know, restated. Um, I would actually like to see a planting plan um, so that we can determine the appropriateness of the plantings, the details of the plantings, the location of the plantings. Um, and these conditions really should have a deadline. And I also believe that the violation should remain in effect until such time as these conditions are met. Uh, and I do actually have proposed wording, but I don't really want to go, you know, I don't want to read those into the record at this point, unless there's some uh, concurrence that this, this is an appropriate way forward. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. Uh, Bob, do you have anything uh, that you want to uh, discuss or add to that? Uh, I I agree with Cheryl on all those points. Okay, uh, Peter, I I know you've uh, been monitoring the uh, minutes and uh, you're familiar with the property. Uh, do you have any questions you have uh, or, or addition you want to make to Cheryl's comments? I just want to add that we have to establish where the edge of those wetlands are and then get a fence or some sort, a boundary planted along that line and then so nobody crosses that again. Yep. Agreed. Uh, Ken, yeah. where, how are you doing? I think Cheryl's covered it pretty well. <clears throat> okay. Uh, George, I appreciate you being here. Uh, do, do you have any uh, questions for us or you have any comments? Uh, not really. I appreciate uh, being able to come before you. I'm, I'm sort of here to aid in any way that I can based on my one site visit at the site and delineating the, that wetland, which, as you recall, I did not delineate all the way to the road. So I started at some point and ran around the corner and then to the back. So. Um, I don't know if the commission is thinking that they need the rest of the wetland. There's probably another 150 feet to the road. That's behind one of the structures, I believe. So I don't know if you have any questions of me regarding uh, the report that I put together. Um, and I assume um, that you, you would yeah. want me to help assist in uh, putting together a planting plan, but. Honestly, one of the things that I do not have, I looked at all the information that was uh, given to me, and I don't know if some of it is on your website or not, but I probably need the the plan, the you know, the most recent plan. I'm not even sure if I have the most recent plan. So, but I'd be more than happy to, uh, as, as Cheryl said, my, by, the way, by the way, Cheryl, hi, <laughs> long time no see. Um, to be able to put together a planting plan that's appropriate for the conditions that are out there. Yeah. Um, okay, well, I uh, appreciate everybody's input and um, I really don't have much more to add. I, I think that the, uh, you know, that there, you know, there may have been some filling out there, but um, as Cheryl said, it, it's relatively, minor um still not acceptable but um you know i think that we we have the um you know quite a bit of information right now and um i, I think um you know if we can get uh additional information onto that plan now george i see you don't have one but um maybe uh, uh um we can get you one 
and uh, <clears throat> you know you can you can add you know the fencing on there like we're suggesting. Um, the old approval we did. I remember we did ask for a sign which was never put up. There was some fencing and some plantings that we requested out there. Um, you know, I, I think anything. Uh, you know, we don't need to double fence things out there. So I'm not sure where the old fence was 14 years ago, but um, we only need one fence. And um, I think the uh, the fence that the, the detail that you gave us last time, I think that was adequate. I, anybody have any questions about the fence? I know that's pretty critical to the whole thing. Uh, Lenny, Lenny, I got one uh, quick question. This is Joe. Yeah. Um, uh one of my one of my concerns is you know obviously last the last time this was done uh jolly block jolly blocks were put in uh along the perimeter of that and obviously they, they worked good for years until somebody decided to fill up fill over them and, and uh use them as a retaining wall. Um but one of the one of the things I might think and I, and again I would I would uh I would definitely like George's uh opinion on this as well, but on the uh on the northwestern side of the uh the site there that's obviously where they they park all their uh you know the wrecked tractor trailers and and uh vehicles and things and yep. um uh my main concern is is leakage of uh everything from fuel oil uh, fuel oil diesel fuel brake fluid antifreeze um to date i have to commend the owner because uh all the inspections that i've done over there i have not seen any uh you know, any petroleum reaching, uh, reaching the wetlands, despite the fact that, you know, all the stormwater runoff and stuff kind of, kind of wants to flow in that direction off of that surface. But, uh, I'm almost wondering if, 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 a if a, a row of jolly blocks there, um, wouldn't aid in that, you know, cause they're, they're obviously so big and massive. Um, you know, if, if, if stuff was to leak, they would, they would be a pretty good barrier. They wouldn't be, they wouldn't be a foolproof barrier because, you know, obviously stormwater could, could flow in between them, but, um, you know, they're pretty immovable. They're, they're definitely more immovable than, uh, than a wooden fence. Um, I mean, I, but I do understand you don't need, uh, you don't need two different, uh, you don't need two fences, but if they were to, uh, if they were to ring that north, northern, northwestern, uh, uh, part of the site with jolly blocks and then do fencing from there that might help contain um anything that might want to flow out of there but again i'm not you know i'm, I'm just that's just kind of my opinion i don't know if that makes sense to anybody else or i got a question now jolly blocks um i show my ignorance here those are the concrete blocks we're talking about or something. Yeah, they're basically yeah, they're like uh, they're like three foot by three foot by four foot solid blocks of concrete Okay. Um, this is something that I probably need to talk with Ron about a little bit, um, and sort of kind of put my put a little thinking about it. If you're concerned about, um, you know, some some floatables taking off and hitting the wetland, um, jolly blocks might not necessarily be the solution by itself. Um, Absolutely, but they're gonna they're gonna stop more than a than a wooden fence for sure. They would, uh, particularly if you had a little bit of soil burned up against them, sort of yep. create a little bit of a even if it's a few inches, uh, that would probably be yep. better than just having them flat on the ground. Yep. Uh, this is Ron Goddard. Um, that's basically what we proposed. If you look at the plan that we proposed, we were going to put new jolly blocks on that side. And um, you know what George said, it's a great idea. Is we could we could, you know, they're three feet high, so we could ramp up maybe a foot uh, of soil, so uh, you know, of, uh, so that nothing would s migrate that way. Um, the only issue with the soil is <laughs> the thought that I have. You don't want the soil to be a barrier, and then you create a issue behind it with, with ponding. So um, the soil would have to be coarse enough, maybe have a little gravel in with it, so that the water could infiltrate through. Yeah. So not just just soil. Yeah. 
Okay. Um, George, I, I just had one question for you. Um, yes. When the, uh, you know, driving around the site uh, to the back of the building or the, you know, where the, uh, where they're, you know, stacking the wood and all that, that little driveway there, yep. um, it, you know, it looks like, you, you know, it, there are going to be some heavy trucks in there, you know, and, you know, they're going to be moving, you know, heavy loads through there. Would it be better to, to just pave that little uh, driveway area rather than, you know, have to come in every so often and, you know, put in, you know, more crushed stone and, you know, keep dressing it up all the time? Yeah, it's, that's kind of a an interesting question it, it depends i mean if if they have a solid enough base and it's defined enough um and they can dress it up now and then with additional stone so that they, they don't have a, a mess back there i think that's probably okay and it wouldn't have, have not have to be paved the only question that i would have is what's between the edge of the pavement and the wetland right so Again, if you if you have a strip, um, the wetland's a little further out, but if you have a strip of vegetation that is allowed to grow there, because um, when I was out there, I remember the vegetation had been kind of sheared down a little bit. <laughs> you probably recall that. So if there was that a few feet of vegetation that was allowed to uh, densely grow, I think that would catch things and create a little bit of a buffer, uh, physical buffer between yeah. that access roadway or area where the trucks would be coming back and forth and and the wetland itself there's not a lot of room there but even if you know a few feet you know say five or six feet would be uh, i think sufficient and it's it's probably that now but just to let it grow yeah so the thing that i didn't know about the fencing is i don't recall where the fencing was supposed to go so i'm again a little ignorant about that I think, I think it's important that everybody know that we're talking maybe five truckloads a year that are going to back in that area. And that's only in the fall uh, to bring bring some, uh, you know, some wood in. The rest of the year, nothing's going to be back there. Nobody's going to back there. There's no reason to be to be back there. Okay. Um. All right, and uh, I noticed we have Rick is with us. So, uh, Rick, you you were uh, the uh, original soil scientist who uh, delineated the wet lands out there. You're familiar with the property. Do you have any uh, anything you want to add to the discussion today? Um, well, I'm kind of coming in toward the end of the meeting here. Uh, a couple of meetings. Um, you know, I, I'd like to add the fact that um, I know there's been some discrepancy. I actually uh, had a discussion with George just the other day. And I think that um, there has been additional filling in there, and it's it's certainly no no fault of uh, the plant owners. Um, I don't I don't think he's. I'm not aware of any filling that's been done. I think the filling uh, that's a, that's a discrepancy there for us is something that's happened prior to his ownership. He hasn't been there that long. Uh, one thing that I'm thinking is that uh, if they're going to put material in against the jolly box or uh, the back of the lot, I, I would think we'd want something as impermeable as possible, you know, so not not gravel. Um, if there are uh, spills, we, we don't want them to seep into the soil. We want them to, to you know, to stay on top and, and be handled appropriately um there's not a lot you can do back there um you know there you know if it was a regular parking lot we could talk about storm drains and separators and that's just not going to be an option for him um so beyond that i i really agree with cheryl and um, would like to see this thing you know put to rest okay well uh George, you heard our, our comments. Um, I'm going to let Cheryl have the last uh, 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 comment because I think she spent a little bit of time um, thinking about this and she wanted to uh, do it for last. I think, uh, Cheryl, that we're pretty much in agreement with much of what you said. So would you like to uh, uh, make comments or would you like to just read what you have? 
Um, well, I, I kind of want to revise what I what I was originally thinking. Um, well, first of all, um, you know, I, I understand the idea of having those those blocks there. Uh, you know, I, I don't I'm not wedded one way or the other to that as long as they're large enough. There's no detail on the blocks. It just says waste blocks. So, um, you know, it, I, I'd, I'd actually like to to, to make sure that we, we are all in an understanding of what what size those blocks are supposed to be. Um, and rather than, um, you know, so my original concept was to, to request um, as a, uh, a condition of permit, a plan for um, uh, review and approval, but hang on a second. Is that? Oh, sorry. The, it's, it's hard to put up when somebody's phone is ringing. So um, the, um, but, but because George is here, um, and I, I would actually suggest rather than do that, to before we issue an approval, if we do issue an approval, that we that we have a revised plan. And what I'm hoping to see is um, either the wood fencing along the whole property, and we do actually do we do have a plan that shows proposed fencing. So that that plan could be just um, you know modified or built upon. Um, and so either fencing fencing or the detail of the of the, the waste blocks um, so that we understand exactly what's proposed there so that that would be one revision the second revision would be or the second addition would be I'd like to see a plan showing um, what what sign you know what what are we talking about for signage where where would the signs go how big would they be what would they say would they say no dumping beyond this point you know caution wetlands I mean that, that would be really helpful to see at least a detail of what we're talking about and where those signs would be placed. And then lastly, a planting plan. Um, and George had already said that he would be willing to work on that. And obviously um, appropriate plantings for the for the area, and the, if there's a wetland nearby or, or, or in the wetland, um, depending on what the soils really are below whatever fill is there, you know, we might need to see different types of planting. And he's, um, I'm certain, very well aware of what we would need to see. But, you know, we would need, we would like to see, I would like to see the location of the plantings, the, the number of the plantings, um, a time frame for the plantings, you know, what would be the appropriate time to plant these, um, and, you know, um, also a maintenance plan, you know, to, so that the owner knows, um, you know, how to take care of these uh, plantings until such time as they become established. So, um, so if we could get a revised plan for the next, um, meeting that would be incredibly helpful so that's all i want to say <laughs> honey are you there <laughs> he's muted oh lenny you're muted Are you there? Okay, I don't know how that happened, but anyway, um, I, I was just saying that uh, the 14 years ago we did ask for a a sign. I think it was just one sign. I can't remember what it said, but uh, if we can find the uh, you know that plan, I'm I'm sure that the uh, the wording would be there. Um, as far as the nope. plantings, what's that? Uh, sorry, uh, sorry, Lenny. No, I, I, I looked at the, I looked at the, through the entire, uh, everything I could find on, on that, on that property, and there was yeah. never a plan that showed. I know signage did get put up. They were the, the little small, um, uh, round yeah. discs that say wetlands. Those were put up back then, but um, there's no yeah. other plan that shows anything like that. Okay, so we, we do have those. I don't know. If, do we still have any, any more of those, uh, those little emblems, uh, Joe? Yes, we do. Yeah, they're about uh, and they're about three inches in diameter. They're, yeah. and they and they just they're white and they say wetlands. That's what yeah. the, that's what they so, have. Yeah. Okay, so if we can get those guys a few of those to put up, that I think that'd be helpful. As far as the plantings go, the last time around, um, you know, if we could just take a look at what we had asked for last time and maybe either uh, incorporate that into you know what you're what you're planning on doing now or revise it. Um, 
you know, just give us some suggestions. And then um, uh, I do think that we should continue the uh, cease and desist order until we can get the revised plans. And um, I think that's about it. So uh, is any, do you guys have any further, anybody want to add anything to all that? Okay. Yeah, all right. I, then. I, I uh, go ahead. Yeah, I was just, these signs, it's still not very clear to me what, what you want on the signs. What Cheryl was talking about was something more substantial than these three inch wetlands things. And where they're going to go is not clear to me either. I mean, what, 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 suppose we put signs on this fence to make it clear that beyond the fence is a no go zone. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I don't really have a, a real uh, passion either way. I mean, we have the, we have those wetland signs for a reason. Um, clearly we can use them. If, uh, Rick, what do you think? Do you, you think you need something more substantial than just the typical uh, wetland emblems we have or? I do not. I think the wetlands, uh, Signs are fine. Uh, that's what uh, I, I work in many towns. It's very common to see this. It delineates the wetland. It makes it very clear to anyone in the future that the area behind the signs is the wetland. So the yeah. sign should be put up at the at the very edge of the wetland and uh, should be a permanent delineation to. Yep, I, I agree. agree. And, and, and they probably got it. They probably got to be put on, uh, you know, some kind of a permanent post or something so that you know, not, not on a tree limb or something that's going to fall down um, at, at a re at reasonably, you know, uh, spaced. Okay. All right. Uh, I'd like to move on if we could. So uh, we're up to um, new business and uh, there's uh, an application in front of us for the uh, Boy Scout camp. Uh, 231 uh, Ashford Center Road driveway construction and um, we're uh, we have an application Joe is it a complete application at this point yes it is okay and um, it seems pretty simple why don't you uh, is there anybody well why don't you just walk us through it real quick well uh Actually, uh, I don't know. Is, is Mike Healy on here? No, I don't think so. Is, is there anybody representing Student Norcos? Joe, can I interrupt? Yeah, go yeah. ahead. Rick Zulik here. Um, I did the wetland delineation, so I'd like to recuse myself from uh, this discussion. Um, I could, you could ask me questions. Uh, I know a little bit about it. I thought Mike would be here tonight, um, but I, I did the wetland delineation, so I'd like to be recused from this discussion. Um, well, Joe, tell us what, what they're trying to do, first of all. Well, uh, it appears that they're they're putting in a uh, an access road, uh, an additional access road to, uh, to get into the camp. Um, and uh, if you look, if you look at the plan, uh, it's it's, uh, it's entitled uh, proposed drive entrance driveway, um, BSC group. Um, it comes off not uh, it comes off Asher Center Road, Route 44, and it takes a uh, takes a, a 90 degree turn to the west. Uh, it comes in close proximity to uh, uh, to a small wetland complex to the north of it. Um, then it, it uh, goes around to the north of a, of a larger wetland complex. I'm gonna I'm gonna assume that there's probably an intermittent water course uh, crossing there because I see a culvert uh, a culvert pipe proposed, and uh, then it continues on to the west. And uh, hold on, I'm trying to trying to look at this plan here. And one. Uh, 
And I believe that's the only, I think that's the only wetland uh, impact is that one, that one crossing site. I can't, I can't tell. There might be two. Rick, Rick am I, uh, am I reading something wrong here? No, you, they, can you hear me? They've skirted yeah. uh, the, the bigger wetlands. There is a single intermittent stream crossing with, with culvert. Uh, okay. Does ultimately connect into the old road. The reason they're trying to do this is because uh, it's been, uh, there's been safety issues and been problematic for people to enter through the uh, the work area, the residential area, the shop areas. Uh, there's heavy equipment moving around there, and they want to have a separate access um, that allows the public to come in and out without going to the the camp uh, maintenance area, if you will, the what the area that you can see from the road. So ultimately, at the west end, it connects into the main road that goes back to the main area. Of the so, so Rick, uh, there's there's only we're not replacing the existing road. All we're doing is uh, uh, putting in that one culvert crossing, and it looks like there might be some widening of the road or something at that point. Well, the culvert crossing and that that road shown is a, it's a brand new road. It's it's wooded right now, so it's a new road. And there's there's activity within the regulated area, of course, but really the only the only impact uh, to wetlands would be that crossing. So, so is it a new road or is it an existing road? No, it's a it's a it's a new road. So it looks like, a, I mean, how many? We're talking 800 feet or something. How long is it? I don't know. It's a it's a long road. Yeah. On the uh, on the application, Lenny, he has uh, 2,500 2,550 square feet of uh, wetland disturbance for that one uh, crossing site. Yeah. yeah. So so, I mean, the, the plan is, is kind of small for me, but it so it, you got a you got a brand new road that's going in that's quite long, I guess, and it, and it kind of goes right along the edge of the wetlands. Is that is that accurate? Yep, that's accurate. It skirts a couple of wetlands. It, it comes in fairly close to a couple others. Um, you really have to look at the at the big plan. They're, they're substantial. I think I put, I want to say somewhere in the six or seven hundred flag uh, range. There, there's a lot of wetlands back there. But they did a good job at you know skirting around the bulk of them. But there was no no way of getting around that crossing. And uh, is this uh, road uh, essential for their activities up there? Uh, they think it is. <laughs> yeah. I, I guess it's essential. It's a safety issue. I think that they do have a road that they're currently using, but yeah. I don't know if you've ever been up there. But it, it does. It drives. It comes past the the um, the caretaker's home. You know, through the yard where the maintenance building is. They've got uh, you know, they've got pods and backhoes and all kinds of equipment in there. Um, they're trying to have a, a separate entrance, which which does make sense. You know, what are those oval shaped uh, things in you know on a plan? Uh, those are topsoil stockpiles, Lenny. Okay. All right. Which I think, uh, honestly, if they were going to do any revisions, I think that center one that's right above the wet ones, they could put that on the other side of the road and keep it further away. Right now, they've got that stockpile right on the uh, right on the edge of the upland review area. If they put it, if they proposed it on the other side of the road, it would be uh, wouldn't have any issues. Yeah. Okay. Well. Uh... And it's going to be paved, the whole thing? I don't know that question. That's what you said, Joe, it's paved? I, I don't know. I don't know if it's, if it's paved. I can't. Uh, I'm trying to look at these things on an 11 by 17. I don't have, you know, I don't have them up on the screen, so I can't. Uh, I know. Oh, hang on. Hang on one second. There's a detail sheet on page uh, PYP01. 
culvert crossing. They're not labeled. It shows it shows a perfect uh, cross section cross section of the road, but it's not labeled. Hang on a second. A, a processed aggregate. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be a it's gonna be gravel. It's not gonna be paved. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah. It looks like there's a detail for some uh, catch basins. Where are those gonna go? I don't. Uh... Yeah, I don't know. I can't. I can't see them at this scale. I, I have not had time to uh, to dive into this yet. Yeah. It'd be helpful if the engineer was here to explain this to us. And uh, I mean, just looking at the cross sections of the uh, road. It's a 20 foot wide road, four to one slopes, and um, A, B, C. I don't know what A, B, and C is underneath it. Maybe it's those. Those, those are the different layers that they have proposed for the I know, uh, road I'm construction. Wondering what they are. A is a uh, three inch processed aggregate. B is eight inch granular fill. Okay. So it, it's not going to be paved. Nope. Okay. Well, there is there is a catch basin proposed. There's another there's another plan sheet that uh, that shows a catch basin to a, a uh, to a to a flash pad um, across something. I, I I it's hard to tell. Joe Joe, I I, I kind of have a, a question about this and also the the other one the other application is I'm wondering if there's any possibility I know we get multiple plan sets um, and, and is there any way to pick one up uh, so we can look at it not just hearing it as um, actually actually yes um, with uh, with this application I did not get any uh, any real I guess would you consider real two foot by three foot plans Right. Um, on the uh, on the on the next uh, on the next one that we have, I do actually do in the office have have plans. So um, you know, if that's something you guys want, you know, we need to we can request them. You know, Mr. Mike Healy can uh, can get us some some actual plans. You know, one one of the issues that I had is, is the plan that he submitted. Um, you know, these these aren't signed; they're not stamped. You know, these are just completely. Uh, uh benign plans here you know it'd be nice to have an engineer stamp and a surveyor stamp and uh you know some details like that so yeah so i will uh i will request those that'd be great thank you uh, well, i don't if, i can uh, i can expand mine on the screen enormously i don't understand why people are having problem with this well i can expand uh, i can expand it too but then i can only see a little tiny bit of it um it's it's i mean i would prefer to be able to see the whole thing at one time yeah okay well i don't, I don't need the paper plans hey so, joe here yes when you get those plans let us know by email when you've got them okay yeah i can do that and uh it'll just be a matter of you guys coordinating with the town hall and uh um yeah. we can we can get them to you one way or another yeah that'll work yep and maybe uh, you can get enough for each of us so we can uh, come down and pick them up. Yeah, yeah. Either way, or or I can uh, we can even get them mailed to you. No, no worries. Yeah, we'll get them there. That's right. Okay. I don't know. All right. All right. So, uh, uh, Rick, you're the only uh, representative of this. Do you have anything else you want to add? It's a surprise to me. I I was not prepared to. Uh... To represent uh, it, I, I, you know, I could talk about the wetlands. I do have a set of plans in my office. If anybody, Cheryl, if you need to see one soon, um, it's right next door to you, right at Airtox. Um, they're sitting right on my drafting table. Um, but I don't really. Uh, I think that Mike is uh, his intent was to put plans together specifically for the wetlands meeting and uh, looking for comments. Um, I'm a little surprised that he's not here tonight, but then again, he told me that they're just, you know, expected that the, the uh, application is going to be accepted and 
he'll, I'm sure he'll be at the next meeting. Okay. Well, uh, unless anybody else has anything else, I think uh, we just uh, entertain a motion to accept the application as it is. I'll so move. In a second. Second. All right. All those in favor? Aye. Okay. Aye. Okay. Great. Okay. Uh, I'd like to move on then to uh, uh, item B, which is 21 Lakeside Drive, construction of a single family residence. Uh, apparently, uh, there's an existing house there that is going to uh, be demolished, and uh, they're planning on building a new one. Um, anybody here representing 21 Lakeside Drive? Uh, good evening. I'm Mr. Pratt. My I'm name is Peterson, professional engineer with Gardner and Peterson Associates. Uh, I'm with Paul is also the applicant, Robert Campbell from uh, RM Holdings. Uh, so Bob has uh, retained us to perform an existing condition survey. Uh, we've submitted 10 sets to the approved site plan. Uh, as you said, we're at 21 Lakeside Drive, uh, bound to the south by Lakeside Drive. The lake is to the north of us. Uh, East Beach is immediately to our east, and another single family house to the west at uh, 17 Lakeside Drive. Uh, so our survey depicts the existing structure, which is really in a state of, of disrepair. Uh, maybe Bob can elaborate later. Uh, I believe the building officials come out and tagged it uh, that it's even unsafe to enter. Uh, so we're showing uh, topography, uh, the road, uh, existing utilities, some significant trees that are on site. Uh, the second half of our plan is a proposed layout showing the uh, proposed two-bedroom house, uh, site grading plan, proper sedimentation and erosion controls, a uh, new septic system, which we've submitted to Eastern Highlands Health Department. Uh, they are on site with me witnessing deep test pits, uh, and they have approved our, our plan. So it's uh, replacing a, a fallen down house with a, with a new uh, two bedroom house, just like there are two bedrooms in the existing residence. Okay. Uh, thank you for the detailed plans. Um, Joe, application is complete, I would assume. Uh, yep, all good to go. Okay. Um, so, well, we might as well go around the, the room here. Uh, Bob, do you have any questions you want to uh, ask? I've looked, I've looked at the plans and uh, I've looked at the septic system and how it's designed and I've looked at the water treatment aspects of it. Um, it looks as though it's more or less on the same footprint as the original building. Uh, so, I mean, I, I don't have any particular questions. Okay. Um, uh, Peter, how about you? I don't suppose there's any chance we could see what these plans look like. Yeah, you've got them, I think. Um, is there a way, yeah, we. Is the way, way I could get a copy of it? Joe, could you uh, could you email what uh, you sent to everybody? I, I don't know if Peter um, got one. I, I emailed them to everybody, um, but, but again, I do have, uh, I actually have had card copies. The engineer provided them, so um, we can mail them out to you guys if you want to have a, a piece of paper to look at. That would work, Joe. Thank you. No problem. Okay. Um, uh, Ken, you got any questions? No questions. Rick? Can't, can't hear you, Rick. Sorry about that. Nope, I don't have any questions. I've looked at the plan. It looks solid. I'm good with it. Uh, thank you, Cheryl. Uh, yeah, um, I, I'm also. I've got the plan up on my screen. Taking a look at it. Um, uh, as far as I can see, there's no well. There's no impact in in the water. Um, I, I assuming that's true. Um, and there is a silt that's detail. I can't quite tell where, where it's going, but probably if I see their actual plan, I'll be able to tell. But um, my assumption is that um, that uh, everything here is shown uh, so that we can uh, assess it. So I'm, I'm good with it. Okay. So uh, 
Joe, Joe, you, I'm assuming you've got the, uh, the paper copy. Do you see any uh, potential impacts on the wetlands uh, from this activity? Not, not really. I think they, you know, they're they're doing everything they can to try to squeeze this thing on the original footprint that was there. And uh, um, no, I, I don't see any issues. So uh, the existing septic system is that going to come out and be taken off site? Yes. Yeah, so this is Mark Peterson again. A uh, couple things I can respond to. Uh, Bob had hired a septic company to come out and evaluate the current system. Uh, they found a metal tank. Uh, I was not there for this inspection, uh, but that was all they found. So we're assuming that was an original tank that's, uh, who knows, maybe from the 40s. I don't know. Uh, obviously, we'll be putting in a new watertight uh, concrete septic tank, new leach field, uh, which has been approved by uh, Eastern Highlands Health. Um, a couple people comment about the footprint. So today the structure is on piers. We're going to be building on a frost wall. It is uh, nearly identical in size and also location. Did work with Mike D'Amato on the zoning side to make sure we're not getting any any closer to the lot line since we're working with a uh, existing non-conforming uh, structure and, and also parcel of land. Uh, we did locate the edge of the lake. We are showing that on the plan. Uh, there is no disturbance in the water to respond to one of the, the comments by the uh, commissioner. Uh, and also in terms of uh, silt fence and hay bales, uh, we do have a line starting uh, west of the site. There is an existing well uh, there today, just uh, east of that, uh, running in a north-south direction, uh, running uh, parallel to the lake all the way across the rear to the easterly boundary and up along the easterly boundary uh, and that good portion of that section of hay bales is also uh, parallels uh, a row of silt fence in addition to it so we have a, a double row on the down gradient side to uh, protect uh, Ashford Lake. Okay good. So, so Eastern Highlands has already approved this? Yes they have. Okay. So do you know anything about the well? Is it a deep well or? Uh, I can comment on that. We had a uh, Stabens well drilling come out. Uh, I'm Robert Campbell, I'm the owner of the property. We had him inspect it. The well is 131 feet and it has water at static level of 13 feet right now on it. Okay, good. Okay. Um, so I, uh, without, uh, unless there's other uh, comments, I'd like to uh, see if uh, anyone would like to offer a motion to accept the application, 21 Lakes Side Drive. So moved. I'll so move. And a second? Second. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Great, thank you. Thank you, we'll see you next month. Okay. Next item is the uh, agent's report. Joe, you have anything you want to uh, report to us? Joe? Uh, sorry about that. I was uh, sorry about that. I was muted. Um, That's okay. Yeah. Other yeah. than your other than your uh, active applications, everything uh, everything has been quiet. Okay. Um. Member comments. Uh, I just have one. Just to remind everybody that we have the uh, Connecticut Land Use uh, Law Seminar this Saturday for those who signed up for it. And also, uh, I asked uh, Bob to send out a uh, Connecticut Association of Wetland Soil Scientists annual meeting, uh, virtual meeting, which is going to be held April 19th. I think there's a small fee for that. Um, I haven't been to one in a long time, but uh, they are pretty informative. Did you all get a, at least uh, a copy of the um, uh, of the uh, notice, the flyer? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah it's, just, it's right. just one lecture, as far as I can tell. It's what? It's one lecture. Usually, there's a, a plenary lecture at the beginning, and then a bunch of other yeah. events. But it looks like there isn't that this time. Well, let's let's put it on the agenda for uh, next month. 
case uh, just to remind us about it. Okay. And um, I think that's all. Anybody else have any comments? Okay. I move. Uh, okay. A second. Second. All those in favor of adjournment? Aye. Aye. Okay. Th thank you all. Have a good night.